welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. This week we're going to take a look at moving layer masks that you can use in video to produce a nice looking logo. You might say, well, if this is a video project, then why don't we just do it in Premiere Pro? The answer is you definitely can. However, this is just another way of utilizing Photoshop. So the effect we want is kind of a shadow that moves with one light spot over the logo so you can read the logo as it's revealed. So what we're going to do is grab our layer mask, Make sure that it goes on the right layer, which that is the layer that we want to be revealed, so that's all right. I'm going to tap the G key to get our gradient tool, and it actually pulls up the paint bucket, so we'll just go and grab the gradient tool. And the effect we want is the reflected gradient. Right now our default is set white to clear, which is essentially white to white. So what we want to do is set it to the default, which is white to black. OK. And then we'll just draw out that gradient. We'll just draw a horizontal line, and there you go. Now, the problem we run into is that, sure, everything we see in the canvas is black, except for this one swatch of clear, allowing us to read our logo. However, the limitation of this layer mask is that everything beyond the canvas that we don't see is going to be just generic clear. To show you what I mean, I'm going to unlink the layer mask from the layer, hold down V, which is our move key, and when I move the gradient off the screen, you can see that it becomes clear again, revealing the, the logo that we want to be hidden. Same for the other side. So what we're going to have to do is kind of a double inversion. So I'm just going to drag this down to the trash can and get rid of that layer mask and start from scratch. So now we have a new layer mask. I'm going to hit G again, which gives us the same options. The reflected gradient is still selected. But I'm just going to hit X on the keyboard, and now we have that gradient going black to white. Let me just draw it out. And as you can see, it's the exact opposite of what we want. It's more like a Xerox machine that's hiding just one bar of the logo as it crosses from left to right. Also important to take note of, on the layer mask, we do have white going off into infinity. And if we hit control I for invert, then that white changes to black. And now the black is stretching off into infinity. And if we move this layer mask around, you can see that there are no blank spots trailing it on either side. First, we need to unlink those two, and then I'll move it back and forth. So that's exactly what we want. Now we won't have any blank spots revealing our logo once it passes. So now what we need to do is turn this into a video. So we're going to go open up our timeline here and set our play bar all the way to zero. I'm going to drag this out a few frames here to maybe to 20 or so frames. Now if you've forgotten where our gradient is, if we just hit the backslash key, that gradient is exposed and if we go and find it, we can drag it back and forth. So we want it roughly there. Let's go down in our layer mask. And as you can see, just by moving it to that location, a keyframe has been added. So next, we want to move our play bar all the way to around 20 frames. Using our move key, we're going to move the gradient over to the other side. And by releasing it, we have another keyframe. If you want to add keyframes manually, you can place that play bar anywhere you'd like and add that keyframe right where you want it. However, we don't want that one right there. We'll just leave it with the two. So when we drag our play bar all the way back, and, uh, let's get out of this by hitting backslash. We can hit play, and that will slowly reveal our logo. And by slowly, I do mean slowly. So let's go ahead and adjust that right now. I'm just going to drag this keyframe all the way in here, and let's try that again. Still too slow. There we go, that looks nice. And I guess we don't need this all the way out here, so we'll just move it back in. And there is our video. We can render it in full 1080p, which we do just by going up to File, Export, Render Video. And here our Render Video menu comes up. You can change the name or leave it as is. You can change the folder. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And here you can select the format. I do want the H.264. And I'm going to select 1080p with 29.97 frames per second. The reason for that being that most of the videos that I end up rendering are in 1080p 29.97. So it's always a good idea to have it match. And then we click render. And I'll skip ahead so you don't have to watch the bar moving. All right, so that video is finished rendering. And then when we go down to that folder and find that video, we can play it just like any other video. Pretty sweet. Two seconds long. 
ready to be dropped right into your video. So that's a quick and easy way to make a nice little logo that we can drop right into the intro of our video or put at the end. Of course there are many different styles that we can adopt with this logo, but that seems to be a pretty good place to start. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching your weekly productivity enhancer. Until next time.